quick video here about on how I structured my project because it's kind of a, a big, the scope is, is pretty big at this point in time and it will be even bigger uh, in the future. A lot of people ask me, hey Anthony, how do you structure your project and what tools are you using? So this video is going to cover that. So if you want to know how I built this on how I structured this application, uh, both the server and the front and side of things, this video is exactly for you. And but before we continue, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up and leave some questions in the comments. And if you are interested in how this is built, if you want to have access to the source code, check the link down in the description and I'm happy to see you in my community. So uh, let's kill the desktop app real quick and let's go to um, Z. Yes, Z. All right. So basically, uh, this project exists on um, a server, uh, the server side of things, which basically are running actors with the Hollywood actor model framework, right? That's basically uh, how the backend is being used. It's also using a time scale DB uh, where I store all the time series data in, right? That's the backend side of things. On the front end side, um, it has two things. It has a desktop application which is basically written with the Ebitten UI, Ebitten or how you pronounce it, I have no clue, which is a game engine, right? It doesn't, uh, there are a lot of people say, why don't you use Fine or Whale or something, Whales or, or, or whatever, uh, or what is it called? Uh, but the thing is that I'm doing a lot of complex drawing stuff on the GPU and I really want to have low level control. So I'm using a game engine because I think these Electron wrapper apps, they don't give you this um, abstraction. And it's very important, especially for heat maps, but we will come into that very soon. And for the UI itself, it's a headless UI, right? So uh, it's being built with a bitten UI, right? Which is just headless. So you need to style it yourself, which is also not that straightforward. But so that's that. So basically, um, if you can see the repo here, um, can I actually, yeah, it's fine. It's probably uh, big enough. And otherwise you need to zoom in, uh, you blind homies. So the first thing we have is, um, it's the Market Monkey repo, right? The, which you can have access to, check the link down in the description, but of course it's not free. Um, so we have the actor folder, right? And in the actor folder, basically it sits a bunch of folders in. And how I structured this is basically, I have one folder for each actor, right? For example, um, we could have the server session actor, which basically handles the server sessions when clients are connecting through WebSockets. It's going to be a server session folder with the server session go file and all the actor stuff will be in here. The same goes for the server, the same goes for um, client session, order books, consumers, and of course it's gonna be consumers per exchange and so on. So that's basically how the backend is the actor are structured here, right? Uh, I'm going to give you some tips as well on uh, on folder structuring in Go uh, along the way. So the next thing is we have the app, right? And the app is basically uh, everything involving UI, the app, right? Um, drawing stuff, uh, all client side things actually, right? It's that simple, all client side things. And you can see it's kind of a big, um, folder structure, and it will be even bigger, right? And you could say, why don't you basically make it a little bit more um, structured? And that's gonna be the first big tip that I wanna share with you is, it doesn't matter what you build in Go, keep things as flat as possible. Keep your folders as flat as possible. I understand um, we engineers, we have the inevitable feeling of, abstracting things and, and making things clean like we're playing some kind of a pad of exile and we are we are organizing or uh, escape from Tarkov and we are organizing our chests and our, and our weapons and our inventory. I know it's cool, but the problem is in Go, you're gonna end up with, um, how do you call that, like uh, import cycles and that's gonna be a problem because then you need to refactor and you're gonna refactor in another import cycle and, and these, how do you call it, cyclic dependencies? I have no clue, I'm so sorry. Uh, let me leave it in the comments how you actually call it. But I think import cycle dependencies is uh, a pain in the ass, right? So I'm gonna keep things as flat as possible. It might seem a little bit of wild and it will be even more wilder, but it's going to, it's just way better. Uh, trust me, I've been writing Go for a long time and these import uh, cycles are such annoying. 
um, to, de to deal with. It's a pain in the ass. Thank me later, right? So it's very simple. It's basically just uh, a whole bunch of stuff. And maybe the one thing that uh, I can actually share with you is that the app here is a global variable. And global variables are most of the time not basically a good, uh, how do you call that, a good idiom approach. But I think a global variable at the right time, at the right place is very good. And especially here, uh, because otherwise you're going to actually, the, the, the app holds the UI. It holds a lot of important things like uh, the WebSocket connection, uh, the actor engine and all that stuff, the, even the containers and the, the, the Ebitin UI, global, global object. You don't want to pause that in every single thing you're creating. Um, this, it's good, right? Of course, if you're working with 20,000 people on one project, global variables can be a pain in the ass. But like I said, if you have one good global variable at the right time, at the right place, it can basically make your life so much easier. But that's how I write code. Um, you don't need to listen to me. I'm just sharing how I do stuff, right? Of course, we have the assets folder, which is very simple. It's just uh, holding my font and probably later on, it's, it's going to hold some icons as well. Uh, right now, all the icons are just like these simple um, letters uh, that I that I just create, like like just font, font thingies. But uh, later on, there will be icons. They will be in here. And I have this embed thingy, which basically is a very simple thing where I'm just going to make uh, a Go embedded FS file system. And so I basically can compile it to WebAssembly or to just uh, a binary, and it will embed all my assets into that. So I have a single binary, you know. Um, classic Go, interesting. We have some, some Docker stuff because everything runs in a Compose. So this is that. Uh, CMD. CMD is basically where all my... Uh, service well, well all my binaries will be bootstrapped basically right it's a classic go pattern where you have for example um, have some scripts this is yeah don't mind that uh, for example the server has a main.go file which i bootstrap everything uh, with some um, uh, reading from the environment and all that stuff and the same thing goes for the storage, uh, which is also an actor, a separate actor, um, just the same thing. And for the consumer as well, right? It even has some flags normally. Uh, here, it's basically flag string, but I pass the exchange and it's going to boot up the correct consumer for that exchange. So that's this. And that's basically what Docker is using. It's going to build these um, yeah, command line applications, how you're going to say that. Um, and it's going to import all the stuff from the server or from the client or whatever. And it's going to build a binary from these things, right? It's, it's, it's a very common pattern in Golang, right? So common, this is, <laughs> uh, this actually used to called utils back in uh, a couple of weeks ago, but um, hey, common is fine because people hate utils. I said, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rename this to common because it's going to be common things. Uh, it's going to have some, uh, commonly used functions like rounding, specific rounding things, uh, very specific functions that basically are used throughout the client and the server, right? Uh, that's common. Then we have event, which is basically where all my proto files are, are basically housed. It's, it's a bunch of, of events that can happen to the system, especially for... Um, the actors, right, they use proto buffers, Hollywood, the framework use proto buffers, so uh, events will be all, is it a good name of this folder? I don't know, let me know in the comments, could be message, could be proto, whatever, I call it event, you can call it whatever you want, right? Uh, markets, this is a simple market configuration thing where I just configure stuff um, to be seen, I'm not quite, uh, it's, I don't know, I'm not quite happy with how this is, is working, but it works, and I'm going to leave it here uh, until I find a better solution. Of course, we have the package, which is Go, also very Golang specific. Um, could call it internal, but I don't know. I, I never use internal folders. I don't know why, because I never actually, I'm not used to it. So uh, you should uh, you should check that out. But this is package, which holds uh, some stuff. Uh, actually, to be honest, I'm not actually happy with the package itself, with the, with the naming here, because it could be some, like I said, I should actually use internal here, right? Uh, but I call it package, and it has just a, a, a DQ type, and it also has a ring buffer, I think. And this is my WebSocket abstraction a little bit. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of things that I'm, 
it's gonna change over time, I guess. Uh, I just called it package back in the day. Uh, is it going to call package in two weeks from now? Probably not, I have no clue. But like I said, if you're building something and you're continuously going to questioning yourself, you're gonna end up in a in a rabbit hole of refactoring and that's not, not a thing. The settings is basically the copy of the markets and that's a problem because um, you can see market setting and this settings gonna have the whole settings of the application itself like i basically uh, made everything configurable from uh, all the bar colors to the fonts to the flash trade to the menu hover colors it's basically you can completely set your team uh, in here the problem is that uh, the markets here, which is exactly the same as here, you see that? The problem is that I was importing settings in my app, client-wise, and I was also importing settings in my server. And um, the problem is I needed to build my server to for Linux, for the Docker to run in Docker containers, and I had some problems with building uh, GLFW, C stuff, and all that thing, so because they are bit client and the server were importing the same thing. So that's why I basically created the stupid folder markets and copy pasted everything. And hopefully later on, I will find a good solution. But you see stuff like that, that basically doesn't make any sense happens in projects, right? It just happens. Uh, and I can basically sit here and question myself um, and being confused and being insecure and keep iterating and searching the whole day how to solve that. I will, I will, I will tackle that when I need to tackle it. You know, that's, that's the thing. Uh, SQL uh, is a simple in init file where I have where I create my timescale uh, tables. So each time I create my Docker volume, it will basically call this in it. So I will have uh, all my, uh, yeah, well, my database will be just bootstrapped. Tables will be created and the indexes will be made. That's this thing. Types, classical go stuff, right? All the types are basically living in here. Uh, these types are, this is actually a very important thing. These types are for the application itself. Um, and it's actually kind of a, copy of the proto buffer files we saw in event here. Why is that? Because um, proto buffers require you to have pointers and I don't want to use pointers in my application. I think I uh, also mentioned that somewhere in my stream or in another video, um, but pointers are putting a lot of pressure on um, the garbage collector and especially if you use them in, in slices, it doesn't make any sense. So I don't want to use my proto buffers that actually require because they hold the mutex or something. Um, I don't want to use values of my proto buffer uh, things because it go into give me warnings. So I made a decision to just have some kind of uh, data types for my client, for the uh, application itself. So I can put these things in slices and in ring buffers without pointers, just values, right? That's actually why. Uh, is that a good idea? It works and it's performant and I have no pointers and I like it. So yes, right. Um, that's all the types. It's a little bit annoying because if you need to change some kind of a proto buffer uh, type on the server, you might also need to change that in here. So, but hey, I mean, with, a, with, with AI and all that stuff, you can easily transform uh, no big of a deal, right? And then we have the web folder, which is basically very simple. Um, if you compile the application to WebAssembly, you're gonna get this stuff um, and you can run it uh, in a browser, easy peasy. Environment variable, like always get ignored, uh, some, some junk here, Binance JSON. it's basically holding some market data, should not be in here, I know, my bad. <laughs> Slap me on the wrist. Docker Compose, Go, Mod, Go, Sum, Make File, and a README, which probably is uh, out of date, like 99% uh, of all the README's, but hey, that's what it is. So this is basically um, how I structured it, right? Uh, nothing too new, but there are some, some hiccups here and there, but I think it's normal. A project is something that is growing over time and will never be perfect, and you need to accept that. The moment you accept that your project is not pinpoint perfect, is going to give you um, the ability to move and to progress and to continuously iterate and make it better, but it will never be perfect. That's something you need to understand, right? So let me know what you think about the structure. Did I make a mistake? Do, do you have a suggestion? Let me know in the comments. I'm happy to basically get your feedback and learn a bit from somebody else. Why not? Everybody learns every day. That's perfect. And um, to take away the server runs actors, very simple. I use TimescaleDB. Everything in the front end is being made with a game engine called Abitten. 
or a, a Python, whatever you want to call it. And the UI is a headless UI, which is called a Bitten UI. You can try to use it. It's a pain in the yeah, It's actually very good, but it's not that straightforward, especially not because we are so spoiled with writing diffs and 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 HTML, which is a which is actually cool. Um, and this is a little bit more low level, right? Cool. So. Again, thanks for watching this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Um, and check the link down in the description if you want to learn how this is built. If, you wanna, if you're a trader or you're a, a coder or if you're both a trader and a coder, check out the link in the description. And thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Peace and love.